<laughs> All right, everybody, it is 7.48. I'm gonna motion to call this meeting to order. Do I hear a second? Second. Awesome. So we are continuing with our regularly scheduled December SAC meeting. We are at quorum as we do have more than 50% of our members here today. So our agenda is up on the screen. Uh, Ms. Bletchinger will read the minutes. We're gonna do our principal's update with a update on fast PM2 testing. And then we'll update everybody on the school recognition program process and the faculty uh, affected with that along with going through school improvement plan update, community involvement, and so on. So, Ms. Bletchinger, could you go ahead and read our minutes from our December meeting? Sure, good morning, guys. Uh, key points of interest was school recognition plan. Ms. Torres set up a time timer for 10 minutes to go ahead and read the article for the school recognition program. Ms. Chilliger posted that in the highlighted section of paragraph number four, instead of the word could, she would prefer will. The reasoning was that the word could opens the door versus having a word that has a firm connotation like the word will was better. Mr. Adams suggested the word can for the same reason. So now Mr. Bozo votes all in favor of can. Ms. Torres second the motion. Mr. Adam also mentioned that in paragraph four, the same sentence as before, but this time after the word compromise, he proposed adding the following words, a minimum of three people, with the same intention to facilitate the recognition program. Mr. Adam motioned to add the amendment and Mr. Knapp in second the motion. Mr. Adam also proposed in paragraph six, item, uh, item, paragraph six, item A, to eliminate the wording three to be read as follow. All attendees stakeholders will have the opportunity to review the preliminary proposal for the allocation of the school recognition program funds. Mr. Adams motion and Mrs. Shea second the motion. Ms. Chiller proposed paragraph five, instead of having seven days to read like this, each school SAC subcommittee and or principal will advertise for at least five school days. Ms. Chiller motion and Mrs. Kazar second the motion. Mr. Napa's motion to approve and general by law, Mr. Adams second the motion. We all voted and it was unanimous. Ms. Mrs. Torres went over the school improvement plan. Um, she also went over the community involvement school wide events, red ribbon, 30% um, design meeting with Mr. Farron, the character parade, unity week, am I going into too much detail? And the PTA update was pajamas, favorite day was a hit, fall festival was great, holiday shop is coming up. And what was coming up was the fast testing and the star. That's about it. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? And then yep, second. To approve the minutes. All right. Continuing on in our agenda, we are going to do our principal update with Mr. Nappins, who's got some information about our fast PM2 update with third, fourth, and fifth grade navigators as they did test a week before our kindergarten first yeah. and second grade navigators. All right, good morning guys. Well, uh, welcome as we're rounding out the first uh, semester of the 23-24 school year. I was telling someone in the front office that I drafted my first email the other day where I said the 24-25 school year, which sounds crazy, but it's actually next year. Um, all right, listen, so uh, what Ms. Torres uh, just said was spot on. So we took, um, we've effectively uh, wrapped up middle of the year um, assessments and these are state state assessments that help us measure progress from the start of the year to the middle of the year. And so we had test one, if you remember at the very start, and then now we're on to test two, just wrapped it up. Uh, what you see here is we've compiled our, um, our third, fourth and fifth grade data because they take the, the FAST where the K through two kids take the star. Um, and we took the FAST before we took the star. Um, so uh, we have the, the FAST data up here. We had a lot of really good things going on here. Uh, very excited to, to kind of show where we're at. First of all, Ms. Zupa, our test coordinator, did a fantastic job. The, the district and the state's expectation is that we test 95% of our kids to make sure that it's valid. So ELA, we tested 98% and math was 97%. Um, Really cool, so level one, um, you understand the, the scale is a, a level one is the, is the lowest, right? Maybe multiple years below grade level, where a level five is the highest score. Um, 
So on our ELA, we, we decreased our level ones by 17%. Um, we had 117 level ones, and this is grades three, four, and five compiled. We had 117 level ones and we dropped it to 66. This is pretty cool. If you take a look at that second bullet point right here where it says 49% of the students, 49% of the students are three above already, which is really cool, right? So that means that um, in, the, in the state's eye, right, like that they are demonstrating proficiency already and they still have a half year to learn all this stuff. So the interesting thing about ELA is that <coughs> they see all the standards, they see all the content in the first half of the year and then they go back and they see it again in the second half of the year. That's the model for kindergarten through fifth grade, right? The cool part about that, our, our goal, our goal for proficiency in uh, uh, fifth grade is 75%, uh, fourth grade is 75%, and third grade is 80% proficiency. We're sitting right around 50, but the cool part about it is that 28% of our students are level twos, and we believe that 28% of those students are very capable of moving from a level two to a level three, and then even some of our level ones moving up to a, to a level three, possibly, right? Um, you know, we do, uh, our concern is fourth grade. We know that that's our highest level of number ones, and that's our lowest rate of growth, and, um, and that's in both math and ELA. And from, from my seat, then that's a, you know, shifts that we have to make in the second half of the year to make sure that the kiddo is in the best, best position possible. So data on the math side, very similar. Um, math is a little bit different though. So they only see, they're only tested on half the content. Um, actually they were set on all of but they've only seen half the content thus far, right? It's just the way that the, the model works, right? So the, the standards don't spiral around like they do for ELA. So um, I actually feel really good saying that 40% of them are already demonstrating proficiency, as you can see here. Um, knowing that there's still a lot of content that they were assessed on that they haven't been taught yet. So it's an interesting model, but uh, it's actually trending kind of in a similar direction that we saw last year, right? So um, listen, all in all, amazing things going on. Teachers are working super hard. The coaches are working super hard at the teachers to make sure that they're in the best position possible. And uh, man, we're definitely trending in the right direction. You know, we're at A school, it's official. Uh, we're excited about it. Um, you know, we're not competitive here, but like our goal when we first came here was like, we wanna be the school at Hunters Creek, right? And um, you know, and I love all the other schools. I love Ms. Correa over at West Creek and Dr. Martin at Hunters Creek, but, um, but we, we far surpassed them. So we're excited about that. Like our data is where we expected it to be, uh, being the highest uh, school in the, in the geographical area here, so it's exciting. Yeah, Woo! yeah, yeah, so it's exciting. Um, and that's all I have. So uh, we're moving forward. Um, teachers are working on data chats this week. Uh, Mr. Mack and Miss Mann um, went through a process with the, with the teachers on Wednesday, I mean, last Friday, where they had all the students' cumulative data, so they're gonna be sitting down with the kiddos this week. Um, probably already half of them are mostly done. Um, just go through, say, hey, listen, you did a great job in this area. We saw a ton of growth in this area or maybe this is an area of growth for you. So um, so you'll be seeing those. They're, they're gonna come out with the report cards, right? Yeah, teachers are gonna send those third, fourth, and fifth grade. You're gonna get them home with their report cards so you'll be able to see everything that your students have done uh, in the first half of the year. Yeah, yeah. it's like a student data profile. So you'll see their FAST data and you'll also see their uh, unit assessment data on there too, so. All right, thanks guys, appreciate you. Uh, Follow-up question. Yeah. Because I know we have, um, two fourth grade parents in the room right now. What is the plan for fourth grade being that it has the highest number of level ones in both ELA and math? Yeah, um, well, without having met with the fourth grade team, which I have a meeting with them this afternoon, uh, we are gonna be making some shifts in personnel. Yeah, so all that information will be coming out today. Excuse me. Hey, how are you? Actually, you mentioned fourth grade. What about the teachers? Because I know a lot of or at least one class has substitute teachers and they haven't assigned a teacher for them. Yeah, actually there are no substitute teachers in fourth grade. Um, Ms. Pena. Is yeah, Ms. Pena is a certified teacher. But isn't she supposed to be covering for another teacher? Because she was supposed to be Ms. Um, Bernardo and then they moved there. Yep. So Ms. Aploff, uh, who's an amazing classroom teacher, um, had intended on returning. She was on leave to start the school year um, and had intended to leave. And then we just received her resignation uh, late last week. So she will not be joining us again. So we're making a shift. Um, Ms. Pena is an amazing lady, a, a very nice teacher. She's not a substitute teacher. She's a certified classroom teacher. 
um, but she will not be coming back the second half of the year. So we are gonna have a certified teacher in there, another certified teacher in there. Um, actually, a uh, senior intern who is a new teacher. So she's new to the industry, uh, but has done her junior internship here, working closely with our fifth grade, high performing fifth grade teachers. So she has no experience as like two years of experience. Correct. Yeah. All right. And continuing on. <laughs> Wrong computer. There we go. Uh, wanted to give everybody an update on the faculty list for the 23-24 uh, school year as the SAC subcommittee, as you all voted on, uh, or the faculty advisory committee, that is the subgroup we are using this year, as voted upon. Um, they have been meeting multiple times to get the school recognition uh, process uh, begun. As we stated in our last meeting, we were moving forward with that to uh, meet the timeline of the um, SAC bylaws that we had. So we had met and we're gonna adjust it based on what we have just heard. Um, when we took preliminary input, um, which is really quick, article in our SAC bylaws, and sorry, article nine, uh, point five, where we were advertising for at least five school days uh, to get preliminary requests from the faculty at Endeavor. Uh, we have just wrapped up with the input of those five days. Um, the FAC met yesterday morning compiling all the input um, from majority of the staff members who participated. Um, data collection is for anybody who's on staff for the 2023-2024 school year and they had voted based off the faculty's input um, to use the school recognition funds now that we are officially an A school, they're going to use the funds for uh, staff bonuses uh, for the year. Um, included in the vote, uh, the staff majority had approved to include Mr. Nappins as part of receiving that A school recognition funds along with our classified staff members being included in our A school recognition funds along with the instructional staff members. So everybody housed in-house at Endeavor Elementary School who is assigned to Endeavor Elementary School will be, um, as long as we follow the timeline, hit all our deadlines, everybody will be receiving some sort of compensation for their hard work for the 2022-2023 school year. So as of right now, we have one administrator, 18 classified staff members, and 44 instructional staff members, uh, based off the information we had yesterday. Um, so all, uh, everybody, whether they're in a classroom, in the front office, or our instructional personnel, like our coaches, Ms. Blair, all will be included in this. So just to update everybody on our timeline, um, so from December 12th through December 18th were our five school days as voted on in our bylaws. We uh, advertised for five school days. FAC has been compiling. They started yesterday. They're going to wrap it up tomorrow morning. And then they are going to advertise the top choices, which as of right now are about 10 choices. So they're going to advertise along with the personnel who they are. We're going to advertise for three days those 10 choices, the personnel along with we're working on the math based off 2019's A school recognition funds. A lot of people and in our bylaws prefer that we show a money amount. So we are working off the money amount we received in 2019. So it is not 100% accurate, but it gives us a foundation to at least start to give our faculty a ballpark mm -hmm. along with you all a ballpark idea of the funds that we are receiving. So they're gonna finish compiling it tomorrow morning and advertise for three days. With that being said, there are two weeks of no school. FYI, for anybody listening, Friday's the last day, no school for two weeks. All right, so just a heads up on that. We are not coming to school on Monday as it will be Christmas for those who celebrate it. Um, so it takes us into January, 2024 and January 8th is a teacher work day, so we do not have classified members 
all classified members on campus. So our third day of advertising is going to be our first day back at school, which is Tuesday, January 9th. From there, uh, all faculty for 2023-2024 school year, if they choose to vote on their top choices for SAC to finalize the ballot, will take place January 10th through 12th. There is no school on Monday, January 15th due to Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So the FAC along with myself, the union rep, and we're getting in contact with OSPA to get the classified rep so that we can all be in attendance to count on Tuesday, January 16th. Because we have to advertise the count for at least three days to make sure all parties can be there. So very close on time. So we hope everybody can be there on the 16th so we can count the ballots and present it to us all at our next SAC meeting, which is going to be on Wednesday, January 17th, where us as SAC voting members can vote on, do we like the choices? Do we need to add or remove a choice? Or start the process over? Um, so then once SACS approves it, we advertise the final ballot with the top choices for three days once again, we do a final vote for three days, which gives us three days of wiggle room to count the votes before we present the final uh, ballot of how money will be split to SAC, which we can either choose to approve or with that February 1st being the right next day, we are cutting it very close to the wire, um, would be the default day where only classroom teachers would uh, for the 2023-2024 school, school year would receive a school recognition funds, which is the faculty has voted. We do not want that. Majority does not want that. So we are going to have to have two SAC meetings in the month of January. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that in advance. We already knew we might need an additional meeting, so we had scheduled them just to make sure we were following our timeline. But that is an update of where we are at the school recognition funds. Once again, making sure we're following the bylaws, the timeline, making sure everything is good to go. All right, nothing. Uh, what, yes. what preliminary came in? Do you have any idea how it went? <clears throat> uh, preliminary did come in based off the preliminary input. It is instructional, classified, and in, uh, administration from last year only was what the faculty had chose to receive school recognition funds. So the faculty had voted that they chose not to include the new staff members that joined for the 2023-2024 school year. Um, they also chose Ms. Stiftar, I'm trying to remember. Ms. Stiftar is our FAC chair, so that's why turning to her. Which one are we after? The, were they the preliminary in, or, input. Like number wise. Oh, number wise. So a lot of it is um, the choices were like an even split and then there were percentage splits. So we're finalizing the math to where you all will see okay. the amounts that went all up. So you guys can, you know, once again, SAC gets a choice of if they do not like what the faculty have voted on, they can start the process all over. Um, but a lot, it is varying, uh, very diverse. So it's, I think once the faculty sees the actual amount, it will alleviate a lot of questions. It will alleviate a lot of math that people were trying to do because we were working with imaginary money, which we still are, yeah. but we should be a lot closer. Anything else? All right. Um, so continuing on, as you guys know, we are continuing to work on that school improvement plan as Mr. Knappen showed with our data. Um, school improvement plan is working. Uh, slowly but surely, it is working. Yes, there are some things here and there, some curveballs, but working through it. Um, in regards to school improvement plan point one, the instructional uh, practice of small groups, um, there was another round of mass tutoring that did begin. It began on Tuesday, November 28th, beginning after Thanksgiving break. And Ms. Bletchinger has been leading the charge with math tutoring. So students have been selected in third, fourth, and fifth grade, meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays after school, once again, to really help them fill those gaps um, and help achieve student growth in math. 
And then tomorrow's the last day, is that correct, Ms. Blutchinger? Yes. For the second round of math tutoring? Yeah. Uh, and then teachers are continuing to do uh, in ELA uh, an hour of small group instruction or their center's rotations along with math, also continuing to do that small group focus on with the students. In regards to PLCs, um, the professional learning communities where teachers meet once a week with their uh, content area coaches uh, for the month of December. Uh, there was a science PLC with Mr. Mack. Uh, then last Friday, as Mr. Nappins brought up, there was a data analysis PLC with kindergarten through fifth grade, going over the data that they've collected through uh, the fast testing, uh, performance matters or the SBUAs, the school-based, or sorry, un school-based unit assessments based on what they are learning. Once again, tracking all the data. And as Mr. Knappen said, uh, Ms. Mann and Mr. Mack have created a chart, conversation chart to go with the uh, students um, so that teachers can meet with the students. They can let them know where they're at uh, currently, how much they grew from the first, uh, first test at the beginning of the year to where they are now see how far or how close they are to the next level. Once again, giving students ownership of their scores so that they can also know what their goal is instead of it being a teacher goal. It's a student goal that they are striving to work to get to with the assistance of their teacher. Um, very busy month of December with fast testing, um, embellishments performing in the cafeteria for their winter concert along at the Fezziwig Festival in Hunters Creek. Uh, we had our assistant principal, Miss Wilson, do a personal call to Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus herself as we did an evening meet and greet with photos here at Endeavor Elementary School. Yesterday, the second graders took an amazing field trip to visit uh, the Dr. Phillips Center for Performing Arts for their annual Nutcracker performance free field trip as provided by the United Arts as it is a grant for all second graders to attend. To keep December fun, especially as we're one of the few districts still in school this week, we do have our 15 days of holiday cheer dress up. <coughs> as you will hear, a lot of people jingling around today as it is at Jingle Bells to your entire day. And we do wanna take a moment to recognize she's actually here. Miss Emma Juliere, who was recognized by the district, not here at Endeavor, recognized by our Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Armbruster himself, for Emma doing such an amazing job fundraising for the Kids Heart Challenge. One of the top, top fundraising students in the district. So yeah, it was actually Juliet really cool. So just to build on it, so the American Heart Association, uh, they invited us, uh, Mr. Julier and Emma, to, uh, and Coach Brandt, who helped spirit the charge here, uh, to their, I guess, a regional board meeting. So we got to go uh, downtown and um, not only recognize uh, Dr. Armbruster, our deputy superintendent sits on the board, um, but it was, it, was, it was awesome. Like we were there for a few minutes and, um, you know, there were people there that, you know, from all over the Southeast United States and doctors, and they were able to uh, to recognize Emma for her hard work and over $1,000 this year and almost $3,000 uh, since she's been a student here at Endeavor, so. Wow. She's only in second grade. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Awesome. yeah. So thank you, I also want to thank the staff, because like I mentioned at the board meeting, just the awareness that goes into it and teaching the kids to be compassionate and to care, it goes a long way. So it's exciting as a parent to see them bring that home so I appreciate every everybody here who, who helps with that. Good job, Dan. Thank you. Good job to you. Thank you. PTA update. They just wrapped up with their holiday shop on Friday, and it was a huge success. Many navigators going in through that store throughout the week, getting gifts for their families and themselves, as we've seen. Everybody's got to get a little special treat for themselves as well. Uh, and as they prepare for the new year, they are getting ready uh, for planning the annual son event and daughter dance. So thank you to everybody who volunteered in the holiday shop, either checking out students, helping students shop, or escorting students back. Uh, thank you so much for all of that. And they're looking forward to those next two big events. What's next? We've got two more days of school after today. We've got house, uh, house lunch and pajama day on Friday. And Friday is our last day of school for a little over two weeks. 
just a little over, because school will resume on January 9th, a Tuesday. So, just remember this, on January 5th, when everybody else is back at school, we still get a couple more days of break. Yeah. So enjoy that, while theme parks will be a lot emptier if anybody chooses to go, because everybody goes back to school on the 3rd. Um, the 12th when we return will be the new student house induction for all of our new navigators who have come in since the last induction. There is going to be our first annual spelling bee here at Endeavor in the new year with our third, fourth, and fifth grade navigators. And just a friendly reminder, we are meeting twice next month in January, which is a benefit in case there is ever a day, especially towards the end of the year when attendance gets a lot lighter. Uh, we would already have a banked SAC meeting in case we are not at attendance, so we're still able to follow our state regulation of meeting approximately 10 times a year. Uh, any questions, comments? This is our open forum, fielding questions. I'll say something real quick. Uh, so we knew that a couple years ago, um, you know, we started to refine the SAC process and really formalize things. And thank you to a lot of the people who are in here. Um, Torres has done a fantastic job of, of keeping us organized. Um, you know, Mr. Bench has been on SAC for a couple years and, and has offered a lot of like really good input. Um, thank you to like some of our new parents uh, for being here. Uh, we knew this was going to be a big business this year. We talked about that in the last year or two, that we were structuring, like super organizing SAC that way. Uh, we knew that when we were going to be in A school, that we were going to have to go through this process. And um, I would say that Torres and Stiftar, um, Stiftar on the uh, FAC side, the, the SAC subcommittee, and then with guidance from Torres, they've done a really good job navigating. This process is never easy. Um, and there's always contention, right? Like there's always someone who, who feels a certain way and feelings are, uh, are always in the way. Um, but I'm thankful that you guys are here. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm bummed that we have to ask you to come in twice in, in January, but you know, for the parents who are making that sacrifice, the staff members will certainly benefit because we get this squared away. Uh, everybody will receive some, uh, some money and, uh, and, and well-deserved. Like these teachers work their, work their tails off every day. We ask a lot of them. You see the school improvement plan, you know, we're asking them to get in small groups every day in math and reading, um, and, and it works, right? Like this stuff doesn't happen by accident, right? Like we didn't accidentally become an A, right? Like the teachers are working really hard to put your kids in the best position possible, so. So that's all I have. All right, so uh, thank you all so much for coming. Once again, our next meeting will be Wednesday, January 17th with a second one on Wednesday, January 31st. I motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you all so much.